Welcome to the Super Subs with Andrew and Harry, where we talk about anything and everything related to football. So this week's episode will be who will win the World Cup and all of the subsequent awards and accolades related to it. So not only the World Cup ultimately and who's going to be the champion, but who's going to win the different awards for top players and top individual attributes that are recorded in the World Cup. And we'll talk a little bit about the historical context of the World Cup, who's won it before, who's looking good going into the World Cup, who's looking not so good going into the World Cup, who to watch out for in terms of players and who's injured. So, Andrew, before we get started with previewing the World Cup and giving our takes and opinions, which may be hot takes, may not be hot takes. Tell me, what are you drinking? Are you drinking anything specific while we're doing the pod today? I've got an ice cold Sapporo. Oh, so yes. A nice, nice beverage for a cold and dreary day uh, in the Bay Area. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm drinking. So this is a whiskey highball by seven stills it's actually a brewery a distillery that doesn't exist anymore they actually closed down this past week so about a week ago um, due to some difficulties in the COVID-19 pandemic but this is a chaka smoke whiskey and sparkling water so a highball is whiskey and sparkling water so having it in this glass right here so cheers to the Sapporo cheers do a cheers in the pod so let's get right into it, Andrew. Tell me a little bit about the stats of the different teams and what's called form. So for our listeners out there that are just getting into football and getting into football because of the World Cup, getting into watching teams and watching teams with maybe your family or friends that are following different nations in the World Cup, what is this word called form and why does it matter going into the World Cup? Yeah, thanks, Harry. Um, Form is really interesting. So it has to do with how a team is performing uh, kind of up to date. So when we think about form, we think about, you know, different teams, how they're looking, how they've been playing. Um, So right now there are a couple that come to mind. Um, So real quick, let's just go over uh, teams that have won the most World Cups. So I think it's worth noting that Brazil has five World Cups under their belt, oh, which is very, very insane. impressive. They've had a lot of really good golden generations of players. We think about Pele, we think about Ronaldo, we think about Ronaldinho, and now the newest generation, Neymar, uh, Casemiro, the list just goes on. Following them, we've got Germany and Italy, both with four equally impressive it's worth noting that Italy will not be in this World Cup, oh. which is pretty pretty crazy um, just considering their run of form leading up to the World Cup, doing so well in previous World Cups, doing so well in the Euros. It's definitely going to be uh, a lot of heartache for that nation and Italian-Americans and everyone that really wants to see them. Um, and then after that, we've got Argentina, France, France won the last World Cup, mm-hmm. and Uruguay with two each. Yeah. So kind of thinking about what teams are coming in with good form, um, we think a lot about teams like Brazil. Um, Brazil have not lost since 2021 <laughs> when they lost wow. to Argentina in the Copa America. So for those that don't know, Copa America is the regional tournament for all the teams in South America. So happens every so often every couple of years all the best teams all the teams will battle it out in a tournament fashion and argentina who is also in form happened to win that tournament so argentina it's a good segue they are looking really hot coming into the world cup messi lionel messi the goat last world cup he's here to shine I think he's going to put it all on the line, and I think his teammates are going to show up for him and try to put it all on the line so that he can really elevate his status as one of the all-time greats, if not the all-time great. I think even though they've had a spotty record, I think that England could make a good showing. Uh, They did get to the Euro Cup Finals. They have a lot of talent, a lot of players in the English Premier League and across the world that are just phenomenal. They haven't quite been able to put it together under Gareth Southgate, 
um, their manager, but I think that they really could make a good run. Worth noting that France, France is still really strong. I'll talk about some of their injuries here in a minute, Mm -hmm. but they will still present a great challenge. They won the last World Cup and uh, they've done well in the the Nations League as well. Um, And I think just thinking about regional tournaments, I think we got to look out for Senegal. Uh, Senegal, whose star player is Sadio Mane, who uh, for Liverpool plant, Liverpool fans and English Premier League fans will remember him. He now plays for Bayern Munich, who is a German team. Senegal won the Africa Cup of Nations uh, most recently, will look very strong. And even though I'm biased as an American, I think that you know, winning the CONCACAF tournament, so the regional tournament for Central and North America, I'd like to think that the Americans still have a little bit of hope to <laughs> at least get out of their group. Um, and we'll run through the groups here mm-hmm. um, shortly after. So kind of running off of form, it's really important to note that there will be some big players, unfortunately, missing this World Cup, yeah. um, either due to injury or their team's not making it. So when we think about teams that didn't make it, there are a lot of big Italian players that will not be there. Um, unfortunately, you will not see Chiellini. You will not see you know any of their big their big stars. Um, and uh, it's worth noting as well. We talk about him on every podcast. Uh, Norway's very own Viking robot Erling Holland will not be there. Mm-hmm. We will not see all of his phenomenal goals. We will also not see Mohamed Salah, who plays for Egypt and also plays for um, Liverpool. And we will not see the man himself, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, who's Sweden did not make it, sadly. Um, so we're going to deep dive here into injuries. So these players, um, per the recent you know news stories and stats, are... You know, looking like they you, they are either confirmed to not make it or most likely will not make it. So we'll do it in soccer and football style with uh, a team of eleven. So for those just getting used to soccer, every time you see a soccer team, a football team, uh, they will field eleven players. So we're going to give some notable players that will not be there. So starting at goalkeeper Mike Magnan. Uh, Pardon my French, uh, not very good. <laughs> he, he plays for AC Milan, I believe, and is a French goalkeeper. Um, luckily, they do have Hugo Lloris, who is a fantastic goalkeeper, one of the world's best, plays for the Tottenham Hotspur uh, team in England, but that goalkeeper will not be out. Raphael Varon is another notable French player. He plays for Manchester United, played for Real Madrid prior really stellar player was a really big standout player in last world cup he is a doubt due to injury mm-hmm. uh reese james english player plays for chelsea in england he is also a doubt due to injuries picked up in recent club competitions ronald arajo uh, who plays for uruguay and i believe barcelona as well uh, correct me if i'm wrong there harry mm-hmm. um he's also in doubt due to injury We've got Ben Chilwell, also a big English player, plays for Chelsea. He is a doubt due to injury. And now we're going to get into some of the players that are unfortunately confirmed to not be there. Mm -hmm. So we will not see N'Golo Conte for France, a wonderful player, just an all-around workhorse in the midfield. So much great work ethic and, you know, so much great opportunity building and he will not be there due to some injuries picked up with Chelsea. Um, We will not see Jorginho Wijnaldum, uh, who is a Dutch player. Um, He is confirmed to be out due to injury. Paul Pogba will not be there. French player, um, also voted one of the most exciting young players. Um, And Harry can get into that a little bit later. He is a French player, as I said, uh, currently plays for Juventus, but picked up an injury. Diego Jota for Portugal is confirmed to not be attending the World Cup. He will be sorely missed on the Portuguese team. He picked up an injury, unfortunately, playing with Liverpool uh, during their regular club season. All German fans will definitely be sad to see Timo Werner not be playing. He picked up an injury recently, 
um, in the past week or two uh, in Champions League football with his club RB Leipzig in Germany. So he will not be there. And the last player that we're going to mention is Hungman Sun, who plays for Tottenham. He unfortunately sustained a pretty nasty um, eye socket fracture. Um, I believe it was uh, in a collision with another player playing in the Champions League competition in Europe. He has already undergone surgery from what I've under- what I understand and is hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be well enough to make it to World Cup to play with his home nation of South Korea. So those are some big players that unfortunately will not be in attendance. Next up, we're going to talk about top countries in each group. Um, So let's pull up the group list. So the group list, so there are eight groups, uh, four groups in each list. And we'll kind of run down the top clubs predicted, our top clubs, who we think will be the standouts in each group. So group A, we've got... Andrew, before we get into the groups, how does the group stages work? So we have eight groups with four countries in each group, of course. Mm -hmm. We obviously know these nations will play each other. How How do these nations get out of these eight groups to go on to progress through the tournament? How's How does that work? Yeah, yeah, great point, Harry. So each group has four teams. Mm-hmm. Every team will play each other once. Yep. You get points for wins. You get points for ties. Yep. So three points for a win, one point for a tie, zero for a loss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how it will shake out, obviously there will be uh, a team finishing first. If there is a tie, I believe it goes to goal differential. Mm-hmm. Is that correct, Harry? Yep. Yeah, so if there is a tie on points, whichever team... Of the two that have tied, that has scored more points, more goals, specifically, will move on. So the top two teams from each group will move on out of the group stage to what's called the knockout round. So we start with 32 teams. We then go to 16 teams. Mm -hmm. And from there, we will work all the way up to um, a finals and a consolation match where we we will get our first, second, third, and fourth yep. place teams. Yep. So Group A, uh, which has our host nation Qatar, which will Qatar will be featured in the first match of the World Cup. So the host nation um, will always get a spot in the World Cup when their nation is hosting, and they will always typically play the first game. So that nation, excuse me, that group uh, features the Netherlands, Ecuador, Qatar, and Senegal. So my prediction is that we will see the Netherlands, the Dutch team, finish atop that group. Yeah, They have a lot of really strong players. Uh, we think of Frankie de Jong and De Ligt specifically, um, and, Co- and uh, Gakpo as well, who's been playing absolutely amazingly for the Dutch club PSV. Harry, what? how many goals does he have right now? I think he might have something like 11 or 12 goals right now, and some similar amount of assists, which is insane because he's only played 13 games. So for those of you that don't know too much about statistics or goals and assists and what you should expect for a player to get in terms of a match, even getting one goal or one assist, and an assist in football or soccer is when you make the final pass before a goal is scored. So let's say you're a player, you pass it to ultimately the person that scores the goal you get the assist so you assist the person that scores the goal so you're lucky if you get one assist or a goal per game that's per 90 minutes usually and a game is 90 minutes if you get one per game that's just incredible already this guy is averaging more than one per game one more than one goal contribution which is either an assist or a goal itself so absolutely Gakbo incredible is playing out of his mind pretty much out of his mind yeah yeah and i think it's worth noting that senegal did recently win as i stated the africa cup of nations so they were recently crowned the best team in africa so Mm -hmm. i think they will be really strong opponents in group a next up we'll move to group b group b is a tough one it's also the group that the usa is in i think that even though we are in that group i think that england will finish on top of that group. 
if they can get their act together, they have a really strong team, a lot of really amazing talent. So I think that England will come out on top of that group. And I would like to think that the USA will get second and we'll move on. But you never know. You know, maybe we'll we'll pull something amazing and we will <laughs> will triumph. Yeah. Um, group C, um, I think, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, I think that Argentina will come out on top of that group. I think that, you know, Mexico is not quite as good as they were. Poland is looking a little bit lackluster, even though they have Robert Lewandowski, who is an amazing player, plays for Barcelona currently, and Saudi Arabia, who is not currently, you know, known to have a really a, a strong football team. So I think Argentina, led by the greatest of all time, Lionel Messi, I think that they will definitely come out on top of Group C. Group D... I think that even though they have some serious injury concerns, I think that France will beat out Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. I think that Denmark, and I correct me, Harry, they're number 10 in the world right now, aren't they? Mm -hmm. FIFA World Rankings? Yep. Yeah. So, So I think that they could pose a dark horse threat in that group, but I do think that France, you know, the previous winners, I do think that they will come out on top. Yeah. They have a lot of injuries, but they have a lot of squad depth. And I think with Kylian Mbappe and Kareem Benzema, their front two strikers, their forwards will be, you know, carrying them through not just the group stage, but after. Yeah. Group E, that's a, that's a tough one. We've got Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. I think that it's kind of a toss up in my mind between Spain and Germany. Spain has a lot of really great young talent, uh, you know, Probably the youngest player in the World Cup will be playing for Spain. I think that they've got definitely an age gap between their older generation and their young generation, but I think that there will be a strong threat. And Germany always produces amazing footballers and strong tactics. Group F, I believe that Belgium will come out on top. Um, we've got, you know, Kevin De Bruyne. We've got a lot of really amazing players. Thibaut Courtois, who's their goalkeeper, they will be a strong force. And I think that Canada might come out second place over Morocco and Croatia. It's going to be a tough one, but they've got traditionally really, well, not traditionally, actually, they've been a surprising newcomer to the world stage of football. I think led by Alfonso Davies, who plays for Bayern Munich. He might actually not make it to the World Cup. He just got injured. Oh, he did just yeah, get injured. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we'll so see. Yeah. We will see. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that Belgium will come out on top. Group mm-hmm. G, Brazil. Yeah. I think Brazil, yeah. and we'll get into it later. I think they might possibly win it all. I mean, Brazil will beat out Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Yeah. I think easily. And the last group Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and the Korea Republic. I think Portugal will win that group. A lot of talented players. One of the other greats, Cristiano Ronaldo, probably his last World Cup. He will be leading the line for Portugal. Yep. We'll see if he's up for it. It'll be a good, good group. So yep. I think we're in store for a lot of amazing, amazing football. Harry, any any thoughts on those eight groups? No, I think you were spot on. I think one country for sure to look out for is Denmark. I think at the last World Cup, they posed a very, very... Actually, at the Euros which, by the way, if you don't know what the Euros is, it's a European competition, very similar to the World Cup, but only the European nations play it. It's very similar to the qualifying tournaments that you'll play in the different regions of the world, but the European nations will play it, and Denmark played there, and some of their players were just fantastic, and one of those players plays for the team that Andrew and I support, Manchester United, Christian Eriksen, and he'll be... Looking forward to playing in a World Cup after a very scary incident in, in the last scary. tournament Yeah, that Denmark played where he had actually his heart stopped for, do you remember how many seconds, Andrew? It was quite a bit of time and he was actually was, yeah. legally dead for, for a little bit. So it was yeah. very, very, very scary. He had to be resuscitated, uh, had to be carried out of the stadium. So very happy he's healthy again and most of all, able to enjoy playing football but also be able to be with his loved ones and family but they are definitely a big threat 
Let's talk a little bit about specific players, what we're going to see at the World Cup. So if you don't know any of the nations, or if the country that you're from, or you have allegiance to, or like the most isn't going to be at the World Cup, what are some players that you can actually follow along to still enjoy the World Cup and maybe root for individually so you can adopt their nations as your own? So I'll, I'll give a top five of the players of associated to the top five countries on the current FIFA ranking. So FIFA has a ranking that actually changes from time to time depending on how nations perform at tournaments around the world. So there's tournaments like the ones that Andrew and I mentioned, such as the the Euros or the Copa America, which Argentina just won very recently last year. And there's tournaments that happen all around the world. If you win a tournament or if you do well in a tournament, your overall world ranking goes up. It's very much like a chess ranking. It's very much like any other ranking in a lot of different sports. So the highest ranked nation currently that FIFA has on its list is Brazil. And the most exciting player, I would say, currently, maybe not necessarily up and coming, but currently on the team is Neymar. And Neymar, he might be a little bit of a divisive figure, but he's a very, very talented midfielder slash forward. He's got all the tricks and all of the moves of the Brazilian players of old, whether it's the 90s or 2000s. He's very reminiscent of those times where football was simple and magical and brilliant and that's someone definitely to watch out for when you watch Brazil, watch Neymar. For Belgium, very small nation, but they are a footballing powerhouse. We have Kevin De Bruyne. He is absolutely tearing it up in the English Premier League as a midfielder for the Manchester City team. And he is just an insane phenomenon to watch. His runs and his passes, most of all to teammates, to find them in a little bit of space so they can score is just insane. So if you watch anyone that can pass well, it's Kevin De Bruyne. For France, we have Kylian Mbappe. He's a forward, and he's really good at turning with the ball, really running with speed, and just scoring a goal out of nothing. He's also one of the up-and-coming, most talented young players in the world. He's in his early 20s, and he's just insane. For the Netherlands, they are in the top four or five nations currently ranked as the FIFA standings currently lie. A player called Cody Gakpo, which Andrew and I talked about earlier, he has double digits, assists plus goals, and he's just an insane player. And we hope that he has a good tournament so he impresses some teams that want to sign players up from other leagues. And last but not least for Spain we have a player called Pedri, and he plays for a club called FC Barcelona in Spain, and he's just an incredible player. His feet are like magic. He'll keep the ball for ages. He won't let you take the ball from him. He's a midfielder as well, and if you're not familiar, as familiar with football or soccer, there is usually defenders, midfielders, and forwards, and of course goalkeepers, but midfielders always play in the middle of the pitch or the field, and he's very much reminiscent of a lot of Spanish footballers where they'll always keep the ball. They won't let you take the ball from them. They'll they'll spot a pass and, and they'll really be magical with the ball. So those are, the, I would say, top five players to look out for at the World Cup. Definitely keep an eye on them. Let's get into different awards that you can win at the World Cup. We'll go through this fairly quickly. So Andrew, tell us a little bit about the historical list of the top three individual awards of pretty much that are given out at the FIFA World Cup. So let's start with the top three and what awards have been giving out given out at the past three World Cups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Harry. So the golden ball is typically given to the best overall player in the tournament, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the player that has impressed with you know whether it's goal contributions, so their assists, their goals. Um, just their overall way of play and how much they've affected their team and their team's trajectory. So the last golden ball um, for the last World Cup in 2018 was Luka Modric, who is a fantastic player for, from Croatia. Mm -hmm. He plays his club football at Real Madrid in Spain. Absolutely amazing player. Prior to that, it was Leo Messi. Um, enough said. 
amazing player, plays for Argentina, uh, where he was born, and then currently he plays his club football in France, in Paris specifically, at PSG. And then prior to that, it was Diego Forlan, uh, another amazing player who played for Uruguay. Another big, big award is the Golden Boot. Yes. The Golden Boot is given to the player that scores the most goals in the tournament. So the last Golden Boot was given to Harry Kane. So Harry Kane plays for England. He also plays his club football uh, domestically in England. Um, had an amazing World Cup, last World Cup, and scored about, let's see, six goals, yeah, I believe six it goals. was. Yeah. Six goals, yeah, yeah. So prior to that, we had um, James Rodriguez, who was one of those players that not too many people knew about. He was a good player. People knew about him. But after scoring the most goals of anyone in the World Cup, he was able to catapult himself to an even bigger club and went from a smaller club in France called Monaco to a club called Real Madrid, who's one of the world powerhouses. And then before that, it was Thomas Mueller, a German legend, absolute icon, has been playing for Bayern Munich in Germany for a really long time. He scored the most goals that World Cup, and I believe it was uh, five, five goals. Mm -hmm. um, the Golden Glove is given to the most outstanding goalkeeper uh, from the World Cup. So most recently, it was given to a player called Thibaut Courtois, who plays for Belgium, small nation, but a very, very mighty soccer force. Um, they've been doing really well. They've got a lot of standout players, including Kevin De Bruyne, who Harry mentioned earlier. Definitely one to watch. Prior to that, it was Manuel Neuer, who plays for Germany. Um, he's been playing for ages. One of those guys that is just so consistent. He's the Great Wall of Germany. Um, <laughs> he's absolutely a force. And then prior to that, one of Harry's all-time favorites, Iker Casillas, a Spanish legend. Um, so good. A really fantastic player. Harry, do you want to talk about some of the other awards that people might not be quite as familiar with that are given during the World Cup? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And the awards that Andrew talked about, the reason that these awards are exciting is because a lot of players, especially, let's say, for example, the one that Andrew brought up, James Rodriguez from, I believe, Colombia, right? He's from yeah, Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. A lot of players that go into the World Cup are not well known at all. So they don't play for good clubs or what's known as good clubs that are ranked highly in the world, such as Barcelona, Real Madrid, Manchester United, a lot of English clubs, City, maybe even Tottenham, or the German leagues, Portuguese leagues, Italian leagues, French leagues, etc. Some of these are really not well known and if you stand out as a player and you can, you can score six, seven goals for your country or you can save a bunch of goals and get the golden glove or things like this or change the game and make a huge difference and impact and go far for your country, you can get noticed by a lot of people. Not just in terms of moving to a better team, but writing your name and your nation's name in the history books. And I, I would say for any player, the most important event or achievement of their football career is not actually to win a tournament or a win a championship with their club, but to win one with their nation because national pride, you're, you're born somewhere, you always have ties there, right? So there's some other awards that are exciting, maybe not as important, but also very exciting in terms of knowing who's what and who to watch out for. So there's the Young Player Award that's actually given at the FIFA World Cup for the last three years, so 2018, 2014, and 2010. 2018, it went to Kylian Mbappe, who I talked about for France. He's a very exciting young player at the time, 2018. I think he may have even been in his late teens, if not early 20s, but maybe late teens. Pogba, who is also a very, was a very exciting young player for France. He's now in his mid to late 20s, but he plays as a midfielder for France. So Mbappe was a forward. Pogba is a midfielder, both for France, and Pogba was given the Young Player Award in 2014 at that World Cup. And then, last but not least, Thomas Muller at the World Cup before that. So I believe the 2010 World Cup, 
He scored the most goals, I believe, at that World Cup as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he got the Golden Boot, and he also got the Young Player Award for that World Cup. So all around standout player. And then we go to the Entertaining Team Award. So this is given to the team that plays subjectively, obviously, the most beautiful football. So you'll hear a lot of commentators or a lot of people that really follow football or soccer around the world call it the most beautiful game. It's because it's a game of free-flowing action. It usually doesn't stop too often unless a foul is called, a ball goes out of play. But an entertaining team means a team that functions really well together. You can see they're really in sync. They pass the ball really well. They work it really well. They they know what each other's going to do. So Belgium won the last one in 2018. Colombia won 2014. And James Rodriguez was obviously a big part of that with being the golden boot winner, scoring the most goals. And Germany won in 2010 for the most entertaining team. And a lot of these awards go to usually either the winner of the World Cup or a team that goes very far, a nation that goes very far. So that's pretty much it for awards. Andrew, this is the drum roll moment. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, and I'm sure our listeners have been waiting for. This is the namesake of the title of this episode of the podcast, Who Will Win the World Cup? So Andrew, tell me, tell me, tell me, Who's your ultimate winner of the World Cup? I want to hear it directly from you. Who are you picking for top dog? Top dog for me has got to go to Brazil. I think that their form, um, their performances lately, just their squad, I think, yeah, I think that they're going to take it all. They have an amazing wealth of talent, a lot of amazing young players, and I think that they're gonna they're gonna take it all the way and bring glory back to back to South America. That's that's my pick, and we'll see we'll see how it happens. You never know. There are always upsets, but I think they're gonna take it home. Harry, the moment we've all been waiting for. Who you got? I'm gonna say Argentina. So both of us are going for South American teams. Argentina, just because Lionel Messi. It's his last World Cup. He's in his mid 30s now. For those of you that are not as familiar with maybe even sports and are watching the World Cup because you're watching with friends, a lot of athletes tend to hit a steeper decline in their mid-30s, depending on what position you play. So as a goalkeeper, you can even play into your late 30s or 40s. So we see a lot of goalkeepers because they're not running all the time. They just have to dive or jump for the ball. And if you're a little older, you can still jump, but you your body may not be as fast or you may not be able to sprint but for Messi, he plays as a midfielder or maybe even a false nine, which we'll get into positions for numbers later, but a false nine is a forward that plays a little bit deeper, so a little bit behind the front line, and he connects the play and brings it up and, and scores a goal. So for Lionel Messi, he is a very fantastic player for Argentina, and he's hoping to finalize his career, end on a high note, and and get a World Cup just like his idols that he looked up to when he was growing up as a young Argentinian player. And he's got a lot of passion. The team looked great this year. They barely, well, not barely, they, well, did barely win the Copa America last year, but they've got a very strong team, very passionate. So I think they'll they'll take it. But obviously the World Cup has a lot of upsets every year that the World Cup takes place. You never know what's going to happen. So Andrew and I are giving our predictions, obviously now with the knowledge that we have and the predictions and the opinions that we have, but anything can happen. Maybe U.S. is going to win the World Cup. I'm not going to bet $1,000 on it, but it could could happen. So let's go on to second, third, and fourth place. So I'll, I'll go for second, third, and fourth, and Andrew, I'd love to hear yours after. So second, I'm going to actually put Brazil there. So Brazil and Argentina look just ama- like they have amazing teams. And the reason I'm putting Brazil here is because I think Brazil, out of Brazil and Argentina, Brazil have a really, really good team, and they've got players that can fill in positions maybe even stronger than Argentina. Argentina, I think, have the passion and the talent, but Brazil have more than enough players to supplement if they wanted you know, an A squad and a B squad, both squads could 
be almost as talented as each other as each other. That's how talented this Brazil squad is for the year of 2022. So I think they're going to finish second. Third, I'm actually going to go for Belgium. The reason being is Belgium have historically shown up really, really good for these World Cups. They haven't pulled out a first or a second for the World Cup, but knowing their talent and how much their players are revered around all the leagues in Europe and around the world, they will go far. And for fourth, I'm actually going to go with a team that I've always admired, and I'm going to go with Spain because Spain have just a lot of up-and-coming talent with Pedri, Gavi, etc., and they've got some old guard as well that know their way around World Cups. We'll talk a little bit about that later as well. I was debating on France, Andrew, I'm going to tell you right now, for fourth as well, Ooh, France okay, and Spain. Okay. But the reason I'm not picking France is because I feel like their squad, there's not as much, I would say, not as much harmony in the squad right now, and Part of what makes a squad performing really well is the team working really well together, and they have a lot of injuries as well. So I'm a little worried about France right now. Of course, they're always going to pull it together. I wouldn't be surprised if they even get second or third in the tournament. But in terms of right now, how I see it playing out, I, I see them getting probably fifth or sixth. So Andrew, give me your second, third, and fourth place. What are you going for for second, third, and fourth? Second... I'm going to go with Argentina. I think that, like you said, they've got a really strong team. I think that them and Brazil are so evenly matched, and I think we saw that in the Copa America in 2021. I think that they're going to be driven really hard um, and really want to do well in this World Cup, but I think that they will fall just shy of winning the the big trophy at the end. Ooh. Third, I know, hot take, hot take. <laughs> third, third, uh, like you, I'm going to go with Belgium. Nice. I think that they have a really solid team built around some really great players like Kevin De Bruyne. I think that they will go far but fall short of making it to the final match. And fourth place, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say England. Ooh, I'm going to say wow. that yeah. – they will, you know, really rally around Gareth Southgate, the manager, and his tactics and his vision for the team. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to step up and try to avenge uh, their loss at the last Euro Cup, uh, which was the tournament amongst all the European nations. Yep. I think they've got the talent. I just think that they need to get their heads in the right places. Yeah. And once it clicks, I think it'll be dangerous. Wow. Wow. I love that. So... We gave, we gave our first, second, third, and fourth. Andrew, how do you feel? Do you feel like we have, if you were to put a bet on it today, let's say you put 100 or 1,000 or even 10,000 on the line, how confident would you be in getting at least half of these teams correct? Would you be confident in half? I think I'm, I think I'm confident in half. Half, okay. I think I'm confident yeah, in half yeah. of the, the top four. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like we said, the World Cup is always rife with, uh, you know, upset and yep. underdogs, and that's just the beauty of it. How how, how about you? If you're a betting man, how do you feel? Uh, I want to say half, but if you look at the last World Cup, Croatia made it the final. So yeah, true. If you true. think about it, I never would have put money in Croatia to make it to the final or even the semis. I would have thought they would go out, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth. Obviously, Modric, Rakitic, etc. They're all great players and. For those of you that don't aren't as familiar with Croatia, they've got a really good team, but they're historically not known for going very far in the World Cup. They're a little bit of a smaller nation, so they don't have as much of a talent pool, I would say, in terms of players that go to the World Cup, but anything can happen. So I would say 50%. I, I'd be confident on 50%. Okay, okay. So moving on, our last topic before we close and officially get into the World Cup. I believe we're, at the time this podcast is going out or releasing, we're about a week away, so we're very excited for the World Cup to kick off. And the next week, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what's useful in terms of the basics of the game of football. But let's talk about some fun facts about some of the nations. So I'll talk about the oldest player, the youngest player, and then most hyped, and then you can talk about some of the other Fun facts that we might have, and we'll, we'll close it out from there. So the oldest player 
in this World Cup that we're expecting. Obviously, anything can happen from now until then, but a lot of the players are actually, I would say, psychologically a little bit worried about injuries for the World Cup. So a lot of players, even they're, though they're playing for their club team, so if they're playing in an English league or an Italian league or even their home league in their home nation, they're definitely psychologically worried about, okay, I don't want to go 100% into this tackle or into this sprint or into this you know run i want to save myself a little bit for when the world cup happens and that's what happens when you have a world cup in the middle of the season so the oldest player that's expected to be at the world cup his name is eg kawishima and he is going to be 39 years old eight months and one day on the first day of the world cup or at least on the first day that japan plays their first world cup game and being almost 40 years 40 years older at a world cup is insane but it makes sense because he's a goalkeeper and andrew and i were talking a little bit earlier goalkeepers tend to have a little bit more of a longer lifespan in terms of their career at least the youngest player at the world cup expected his name is gabby and we talked about him a little bit he plays for barcelona very, very talented player, and he's going to be 18 years old at the World Cup. Andrew, what we were, what were we doing at 18? I I graduated oh. from high school, and I I didn't know. I, I watched anime. What what were you doing? <laughs> Nothing productive. Uh, <laughs> trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Exactly. And, you know, trying to live on my own at college. Certainly not playing on the the world stage in front of millions and millions of people. It's just incredible, and it's probably the most I heard somewhere reportedly this year it's expected that five and a half billion people are going to be watching the World Cup this year. Imagine as an 18-year-old, you're representing your country and you're going out onto the field and five and a half billion people are watching you. That's just incredible. Just insane. So Gavi, 18 years old, if you're listening to this podcast, which you're most likely not, but if you're listening to this podcast, good luck. (laughs) So... Some of the most hyped players we, we've we already named, but Neymar plays for Brazil. He It's most likely his last or second to last World Cup. He's getting up there in age. He's early 30s now. Mbappe, he is a French player, still young, very, very talented, loves to score goals, plays for the France team. And Messi, it's most likely his last World Cup. Lionel Messi, he's about 35-ish, mid-30s, and he's hoping to lead his Argentina team to a championship. So, Andrew, let's close it out with two other facts about the World Cup. What can you tell us besides what what we just went through about the World Cup? Yeah, so worth noting that this is the first World Cup in the Middle East, yeah. uh, which is a big reason. Well, it is the reason why we're getting a World Cup in the winter for the first time, because yeah. average temps in the summer months in Qatar are well over 100 degrees and due to player safety they had to host it in the winter when the temperatures Mm -hmm. were a balmy 80 85 degrees on average uh, during the day and then we'll close it out with teams that have scored the most goals historically because we all love goals right so Brazil has scored an astounding 229 goals across all of the World Cups they've been a part of. That is mind-blowing. Next up and very close behind is Germany, and their record is combined when they were also West Germany as well. 226 goals, very close to Brazil. And Argentina was third at 137 goals. Wow, that drop-off from Brazil to Argentina. It's big. Yeah, yeah, it's big. So, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. I, I can only hope that, you know, the goal tallies rise and we get a lot of really fantastic highlight reels out of this. Absolutely. So, Harry, as we close this out, as the World Cup is about to begin, what are your final thoughts? My final thoughts are, irregardless of what your thoughts are about the World Cup, whether you're hyped whether you're not hyped whether you're excited for one nation multiple nations one player no players i think it's a great way to just bond with family and friends and to really get interested into something that doesn't happen quite often i mean over the lifetime that you'll have you're not gonna you're gonna have you know maybe what 15 
20 World Cups. It's not going to be that often. It comes every four years, and it's a great time to just get together with people. And as much about the results it is for these individual players and nations, it's about really bonding with people that you feel close to, your your nation and your ethnic background or the people that are close to you. And I think most of all, have fun. Honestly, if you're getting into the sport and you're learning the sport, some of the tips that we talked about on the first three pods will definitely help watching individual players that you really like, watching nations that you've traveled to and you adore, or watching nations that you identify with and are part of your ethnic background will really help. And even if you are concerned about the controversies that surround the World Cup, which Andrew and I are definitely concerned about, I think we can all agree that it will be, in the end, a very entertaining World Cup, and it's going to be one that we've certainly never seen before with this mid-year cycle. Andrew, what can you give us in terms of final thoughts? What are what are you thinking as we enter the World Cup, which is happening just a week away from now? You know, it's, it's a fun time to be a football fan. Oh, Even yeah. if you're brand new to the sport, oh, yeah. it is just a really fun time. You know, try to catch a game with friends, with family, go to a pub, go to your, your local sporting venue. The games will be shown everywhere. It's like the Olympics. It brings people together. Yeah. It's just a really fun time to get into the game. And I think that if you're just starting out, you couldn't have picked a better time to start watching the game. Mm -hmm. It can only build from here. You'll find players you love. You'll be able to follow them to their club teams. Just enjoy the ride. I would say just like Harry, have, have a lot of fun and, uh, share, share some laughs with friends. You know, hopefully you get some highs, you'll probably get some lows Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's just a great time. Yeah. So that was today's episode of the super subs with... Andrew and Harry tune in next time for the basic rules and regulations of football. So next week, the world cup is launching. And if you're listening to the podcast, when it comes out, you'll know that next week we're looking forward to the world cup, but how as a fan, if you're new to the sport of football or soccer, how do you know what's going on? There's a yellow card. There's a red card. Is a, is there a blue card? Is there a green card? What, what do the lines mean? If you go out of the line, if the ball crosses over the line, does it have to be the whole ball? half of the ball for it to be out and for you to throw it in. What does offsides mean? How do you even score a goal? Does the ball have to pass over the whole line? What is this VAR they talk about? So we'll go over all of these rules, maybe not all in detail, but we'll go over the most important rules for a casual fan or a casual person getting into the sport of football or soccer to really understand, to help you understand more of the nuances about football while you're watching a match. So tune in next time for the basic rules and regulations of football. That was the Super Subs. Catch you all on our next pod. Mm-hmm.